Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to forge a cool knife using some welding rod. And here I'm using an unfinished hatchet to open this package of 7018 welding electrodes. Probably one of the most common or ubiquitous uh, welding rods out there. It's for an arc welder. And of course it's covered in flux and that needs to come off because what we need is the steel uh, core, the steel rod in the center. So first I started trying to use some acetone to soften the flux and that didn't really work very well and figured out as I went the best way to clean off these uh, electrodes and get them down to clean bare steel. Really just knocking off the flux dry was the best approach and WD-40 didn't really help that much. It kind of just gummed up my sandpaper. But uh, as I'm working on cleaning these uh, welding rods off, I need to build a canister because these are going to go in a steel canister, which is going to keep this uh, forge welding process atmosphere free and allow us to make our billet for this knife. So you see, I'm getting a little smarter every moment here and using the drill to uh, clean these off with the sandpaper seemed to be about the best approach. A couple people have mentioned uh, why not use some TIG rod and that would probably work as well. I wanted to use this ubiquitous and uh, commonly recognized arc weld, arc welding rod here. So we've got some, uh, got some rods cleaned off here and I thought this was going to be close to enough to fill our canister up. Turns out it wasn't. In, in fact, almost the entire uh, package of welding rods that I purchased for this project went into this canister and I maybe could have got a few more in there but got it pretty much filled up here but I need to cut these down to about four inches and then clean off all of the WD-40 and, and uh, dirty residue just to make sure we have clean steel as much as possible here. You'll notice the inside of my canister is covered in white paint that is to keep the contents from welding to the can making it much easier to remove after the forge welding process. This powder I'm putting into the canister is 1084 powdered steel. The plan here is to create a neat contrast between this high carbon 1084 powdered steel and these mild steel rods. These are mild steel so you might be thinking how is this going to make a good knife? Well just wait and see because we're going to incorporate this entire canister billet into a pretty cool knife. Got that all filled up and all the voids knocked out and we can weld up the top of this canister to make it almost airtight. Little note here, you wanna make sure that there is a tiny pinhole in your welds. If there's not, make one with a little tiny drill bit so that your canister does not swell up and pop. We'll heat this thing up and it takes probably 20, 30 minutes to get this thing heated up all the way to make sure we have a good core temperature so we don't have any problems forge welding this whole mass together. The forge, weld, forge welding press comes in handy for this process. Let it cool down a little bit and we can now begin cutting off the canister. And as you'll see here, once we have it sliced open, it does come off very easily. And that is due to the titanium and dioxide content in that white paint, it creates a non-welding barrier and makes this process relatively easy. So you'll see a solid chunk of steel there and it looks pretty good so far. A lot of times in canisters you'll have like cracking on the corners, but with all these little steel rods in there, it really helps that linear tension when you're forge welding it all together and keeps this nice and solid. So we've got this forge down into a flat bar, still pretty thick, and I'm gonna go ahead and grind some grooves into this billet to introduce uh, more patterning in our final product here. This is going to reveal the, sort of the uh, inside of the billet, what we're doing here in a 3D manner. Once we uh, continue forging this out, we're going to, expose that in a 2D fashion on the surface of the steel right here with the forging press squashing down those channels and uh, basically making that into a 2D version of that groove. Once we get the bar drawn out a little bit more and flattened up we can cut it in half and 
prepare it for the next stage of the process here. Now, while this 1084 powdered steel would actually make a decent blade edge, there's so much mild steel with these welding rods in this billet that I would not ever be comfortable using it for a knife blade, or at least, I mean, where the edge is at. So, what we're going to do here is clean up the insides of this billet and then incorporate a piece of 80 CRV2 high carbon steel in the middle of this to create a sort of sand my type construction and that is actually what is going to be the edge on our blade here. So I just need to tack weld these together with the arc welder to hold them together for the forge welding process and then we can start forging this billet into something we can make an, an actual blade out of. Trying to get some flux on there as quick as possible. Of course, I doused it in WD-40 prior to putting it in the forge, which seems to help. And this is just a packing, a billet packing uh, process right here uh, before getting it up to final forge welding heat to make sure everything is nice and flat. And here we are at our forge welding heat with that um, steaming appearance as you get with the flux on the properly heated billet. And now that we have it forge welded together into one piece, we can begin drying this out into something we can make a blade in, out of. I had some minor D lambs at the end of my billet here, which is not uncommon. So cutting that handle off there and then also cutting in an angle for us to begin forming the point of our blade. But I'm actually going to start with the tang or the handle first. This is just a simple method of dropping down that uh, tang material and creating a natural drop edge or guard to this blade here. Now I started out with a little bit uh, too, too little, not quite enough uh, material for that handle. And I, I've been used to forging out some nice thin tapered blades on a lot of kitchen knives and different things like that. And uh, I kind of had to recalibrate what I was doing uh, on this particular project here. So you'll see how the angle that I cut into the end of the billet uh, serves as our preform for the tip of the knife here. And this is important because it allows us to draw that blade steel around up to the tip instead of simply grinding or cutting that in. And this is also relevant to the pattern when you're doing any kind of Damascus or pattern welded steel. Instead of simply cutting that off, you're actually forging it up around so that it curves around uh, following the actual geometry of the blade. So this billet needs to be wider, and we've got some uh, some things forged in here for the for the handle and the tang. But we need to widen everything out here, and that was part of the plan from the beginning. So using the forging press and the round dies, that's pretty effective, and just to spread that out into a nice wide chopping blade here. So this is where I had to come back and incorporate some more material into the tang or the handle of the knife here and I had to touch that up with the angle grinder just a tad so to avoid that uh, little mechanical inclusion that you can see starting to form right there under my hammer but again like I said I miscalculated the amount of material that I needed for the handle on this particular project and had to readjust but that's the great thing about forging until you have finished the project there's a lot of leeway when you're just building a cool project out of your out of your brain like I'm doing here so it's a lot of fun getting some of those uh, channels that that are formed in the blade by that those round dies forge those out flatten things up here and begin working on the bevel here and I do want to forge this bevel down to a an appropriate thickness for a couple of reasons primarily in this case because I want our sand my or cladding to follow all the way down very close to the edge of this blade instead of begin revealing about halfway up which is what would happen if we just left this thickness consistent across the width of the blade so some final forming here and forging and straightening on this blade is starting to take a nice shape I really kind of like this it's almost like a uh, Hudson Bay camp knife of the uh, trapping era, these large wide blades that uh, a lot of trappers would use for various camp chores. Forging is finished and we need to go ahead and normalize and begin the heat treating process on this blade here. Now the important thing to remember is that our core steel that's going to be the edge 
is 80 CRV2 and so the heat treat processes that we're using are going to be focused on that particular steel. Once we've completed a process anneal, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up the profile on this knife and get everything close to where I want it in the finished product. Using the KMG TX grinder here and then my classic KMG grinder from Beaumont Metalworks. Put a lot of hours on those things. Into the quench we go. This is AAA quench oil because our ADC or V2 does have the appropriate alloy content to be able to uh, harden appropriately in this oil. And then just some minor straightening out of the quench as the blade cools down and begins to transform into martensite. After a couple of tempering cycles, we can begin finish grinding the blade here. So at this point, I want to be very careful about paying attention to where my my cladding is in relation to my core steel. And this actually went pretty well. As you gain experience and continue to work with those kinds of projects uh, and keep your forging as clean as possible and consistent as possible, it's, it becomes more, uh, it becomes less difficult to keep that core steel centered. And so I'm just paying attention to that just to make sure. And I will dip this into some ferric chloride at the beginning or the early stages of the finish grind to make sure that I can see where my core steel is and make some minor adjustments as needed. Finishing up the blade with a convex grind on my slack belt attachment. This is very handy. I use it for axes and hatchets of course all the time. But also on big choppers like this or any kind of convex blade grind that I want to do it's very handy for that as well. I found a little inclusion at the spine there and I needed to take that out. I wasn't concerned about the structural integrity of the knife but I don't want to put this into ferric chloride or any kind of etch with a little inclusion like that. It can eat down inside there and cause major or significant issues in the blade. So it's time for the chop test to see how this performs and I've got a 2 by 3 here and I'm going to go ahead and go through this four times I believe and of course as you saw it shaved nicely going into the chop test and we'll go through this several times here and oh, we've got a little bit of a problem. You can see that right there, some edge deformation. That's not good. So what the problem ended up being here was the edge geometry. This is take two. I went and reprofiled the edge here. So basically, if your heat treat is good, I mean, that's usually the first thing you're going to look at. Maybe not the first thing, but that's an important aspect. If your heat treat is good, the next thing you look at is uh, blade geometry. And this, as I mentioned earlier, I've been making a lot of kitchen knives lately. And just like I kind of miscalculated the amount of material for the tang, I also made that edge too thin for this particular knife. Had to go back and, and redo that for a chopper. This is not a slicing knife, it's a chopping knife. And we were able to get through the uh, two by three four times and still take hair off. So that's good to go. Nice tough blade here and don't have any complaints there. So if you have, if you have uh, edge deformation, make sure your heat treat's good, and then uh, check your edge profile and go from there. All right, we can go ahead and hand sand this thing up, which was relatively easy compared to most of the blades I typically do that are comprised completely of high carbon steel. There's so much mild steel in this jacket on this blade that it sanded up quite nicely, quite easily compared to what I'm used to. So into the etch we go, cleaning off the oxides about every 10 to 20 minutes and I've had this in and out for probably a couple of hours to try to get a nice deep etch. So it's worth noting that your nickel steel that you typically use for pattern welded Damascus, it, it etches differently than this mild versus high carbon. So required more etching to get the kind of contrast and uh, sort of texture into this blade that I wanted. Just need to hand sand the olive drab canvas micarta and we'll be good to go here. All right guys, we did it. We made a super cool knife using probably one of the most ubiquitous welding rods available and some other steel as well. And I'm gonna show you some pictures of it in just a second here. It turned out pretty cool. And don't forget that you can support the channel by hitting that like button, subscribing, the notifications bell, and leaving a comment. I appreciate that. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video.